emerge, provinces emerge that are all controlled by crusader um, nobility, and things go well for a period of time. One thing your textbook uh, doesn't mention is that the Crusades themselves, the First Crusade, was, was in incredibly bloody and um, horrific, especially when it comes to the retaking of Jerusalem. Um, when Christians enter the city of Jerusalem, they butcher every person that they can find. Um, there was no sparing of lives. Um, they killed indiscriminately. And then women and children are recorded as being murdered. Um, places were pillaged. Um, all the valuables and things were stolen. Uh, this was an opportunity for people to not just be forgiven by God, but some people saw this as an opportunity to loot and make money and carve out a piece of the cake for themselves. Um, so you had all different types of people who answered the call to go on the Crusades. You had criminals, you had people who were extremely devout and, and in focus with their faith, who were essentially good people. Um, and everywhere in between, profiteers, people looking to make money. Um, so the First Crusade had a little bit of everything, different groups of people. The Second Crusade begins when Muslims kind of unite and retake parts of the Holy Land, uh, sparking into action the declaration of a Second Crusade by the Pope. And the Pope orders them to go retake the lands that had been lost by these Muslims, and overall, guys, the Second Crusade as a whole is a complete failure. They don't retake the lands. The Muslims defeat them in battle. Lots of lives are lost. Uh, it's an overwhelming defeat for, um, for Christian Europe, Western Europe. And um, ultimately, that will stem into the Third Crusade. The Third uh, Crusade is probably the most interesting of the Crusades, um, probably because of this guy right here, Richard the Lionheart. He will be known as Richard of Lionheart for what he does here. Uh, he's actually from England, right? He's one of the um, Norman kings of England. And he will wind up going to the Holy Land and having many battles, which he's successful in. He retakes, um, he retakes land and is successful in doing so where others had failed. And uh, because of his military success, they nickname him the Lionheart because he fights like he has a lion's heart. Um, so when the Pope orders a third crusade, there are several monarchs, major monarch, major powers in Europe who answer the call. First guy, Richard the Lionheart I have up here. Second person is Frederick the, uh, the First uh, Barbarossa of the Holy Roman Empire. I mean, there's more to it than just Germany, but in essence, it's Germany. Um, and Philip II of France. And together they form the bulk of what would be Europe. And they launch an attack against um, the people in uh, the Middle East and the Holy Land. Frederick I doesn't even make it there. He dies on his way there in an unfortunate accident where he either drowns from a heart attack or has a terrible accident. Um, most of his men then return back to Germany the Holy Roman Empire. So most of this was fought between um, Richard of England and Philip of France, Philip II of France. Um, and the more successful of the two would be Richard the Lionheart. Overall, some key battles were won by Richard. He marched to within sight of Jerusalem itself, which was that big prize. And the main uh, protagonist, I guess if you will, between the Second and Third Crusade is a guy named Saladin. Saladin was a brilliant general, Muslim general. Um, in fact, some historians would say he was one of the best generals in history. Um, very successful on the battlefield, but he was a great politician as well. He was able to be very organized and get things done politically. He was also militarily very successful. Uh, so very, very important figurehead during the Crusades. Um, between Richard and Saladin, they saw each other, I suppose, as somewhat of an even match, and they speak to each other, and they come up with an agreement, and that's really what the Third uh, Crusade ends with. It is a, okay, let these Christians go, do not murder them, to which Saladin agrees. 
Um, and you can keep in possession Jerusalem. All right, Richard allows Jerusalem to be uh, continuing the hands of uh, the Muslims in exchange for being promised that Christians could go and visit the area and not be threatened or be killed. Because you have to understand at this time, guys, there is a big movement uh, where people go on pilgrimages. All right, a pilgrimage uh, at this time period would be going and visiting the holiest places where relics of uh, Jesus are said to have uh, to have been kept. All right, and so they would go and visit these places and show their devoutness to their faith by visiting these places um, and either touching these artifacts or seeing these artifacts. It was a pilgrimage, um, and so with that, Saladin promises that these um, Christians would be allowed to go in and not be harmed. Um, and that's kind of the end of it. The Third Crusade is probably the second most successful. The first, obviously, being the first, because they actually did take the Holy Land. But there are some victories here. But the overall uh, ending is the Holy Land hadn't been retaken. So you can even say that the Third Crusade was a failure. Um, no crusade after the Third Crusade will ever get as far as Richard the Lionheart did in the Third Crusade. Um, that's it. All of the others, if you even want to call them crusades, most of them were just blatant military fumbles and failures that resulted in absolutely nothing but um, catastrophe. In fact, some of them, they attacked themselves. Um, they need money and they need to uh, finance their, these crusades. So instead of in attacking the enemy because the, the enemy was too far away, they, they attacked Christian cities and towns. In fact, Constantinople itself will be sacked by crusaders to try and finance the wars for the crusaders. In reality, the crusaders weakened Constantinople, which is the capital of the Byzantine Empire. They weakened it into such a state that it actually falls to the Muslims in the 1400s, the later parts of the 1400s. So just um, overall the Crusades, they did not accomplish what they wanted to do, the main goal, which was to retake the Holy Land. But that's not to say that they were completely ineffective at all, because they did have some success, successes that they never really in intended to have, but they were kind of like domino effects. Things happened. Um, because of these crusades and uh, that is some of the positive outcomes right the positive outcomes were that uh, western europeans had been in a dark age for such a long period of time they had forgotten a lot of things that the romans used to do they they didn't have as much knowledge or education they lost the knowledge on how to build buildings in certain ways how to dome things use arches the right way they were building very primitively in Western Europe. Um, and when they visit the Middle East, the Middle East was, um, it was going through a golden age. So, you know, science and math and all these beautiful ornate buildings are being built. And these Western European people just look at this and say, wow, this is amazing. We should take some of this knowledge and bring it back, which they do. And so, in effect, you know, it enlightens some of the people. It starts a new enlightenment movement where knowledge and education and um, the arts, as well as um, building, building structures, engineering, things like this, they become important and they're brought back to Europe and they improve Western Europe. They really improve it. New trade routes are established. People in Europe are exposed to certain luxury goods for the first time, including things like spices. Um, and there's a whole new market that will be created for a demand of the goods that people had seen in the Middle East, which will spark an economic growth. New trade routes will be established um, and money will be flowing back and forth to the regions. Uh, it does also have some pretty bad negative uh, things as well. And that is, it absolutely decimates the relationships between Europeans and the people in the Middle East. Of course, there's always room for profit and so trade routes will continue but the political, um, the actual political field is great distrust towards one, man, one another and great disdain, um, which will persist for a very long period of time. Um, some would argue that still to this day, right? Uh, 
so that is essentially what I wanted to tell you about the Crusades. Um, there are many of them, and uh, you don't have to know. I don't want you to know about all of them. The first three are the ones that I just want you to know about. So, hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, you know, I wish we'd be back in the classroom and I could see you guys again. Uh, I'll keep doing these. All right, um, keep doing your work. If you guys have any problems, please just reach out to me. You know, I'm here for you guys. Uh, we've got about a month left, right? About a month left, and then hopefully we can begin the school year new. Um, I'll make more videos, but uh, I'll see you guys for the next one. Uh, until then, keep staying safe, and I uh, wish you guys all the, the health, uh, health that I can wish you. All right, so take it easy, and see you next time.